Hi, Gary Stearman, making this broadcast on uh, t uh, Monday, the 27th of August, uh, for release on Tuesday, the, the 28th. This is a news item that has to do with Egypt, and believe me, Egypt is going to be in the news uh, for the next several weeks. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, Mohamed Morsi, uh, now the Prime Minister of Egypt, is doing everything he can to militarize Egypt and to put his favorites in positions of power for political reasons, not necessarily for military knowledge. And this is a recipe for total disaster. The Jerusalem Post uh, uh, writes this, Brotherhood taking total control of Egypt. With the rise of Morsi, a new dictatorship may be replacing the old while the world persists in looking for signs of pragmatism. Will Morsi be pragmatic? Will he be a systematic leader or will he be a zealot? That's the question. I think I know the answer to that question. Second paragraph, while the world pers persists in looking for signs of pragmatism in the Egyptian presidency, uh, Mohamed Morsi is quietly taking over all the power bases in the country. Having gotten rid of the old guard, he replaced them with his own men, officers belonging to the Muslim Brotherhood, or known to be sympathizers. And then he turned his attention to the media, replacing 50 editors and working for the government's extensive and influential press empire. And we've mentioned this previously. Uh, the editors of Al Aram, Al Akbar, Al Gomhoria have been kicked out, replaced with Muslim Brotherhood favorites. Wow, how to control a country. Uh, he is now busy appointing new governors in the 27 regions of Egypt. Uh, Hosni Mubarak, on the other hand, used to choose retired generals uh, that he could depend on for sensitive posts. More, uh, Mohammed Morsi is hand-picking his friends in uh, the Islamic Brotherhood. The party faithful are going to be the new powers that be. And at the same time, we have this from Debka File, uh, dateline August 25th. M Morsi is shopping for nuclear-capable missiles in Beijing en route to Tehran. <clears throat> the White House is the way this story opens. The White House has fixed an appointment for President Barack Obama and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to hold talks on September 27th. This is reported by Deb Gefile from Washington. Netanyahu will spend 10 days in the United States, during which he will address the UN General Assembly and launch Israel's counterattack on the virulently anti-Semitic themes of Iran's official anti-Israel propaganda. This timeline indicates that the Prime Minister is inclined to accommodate President Obama by delaying once again an Israeli attack on Iran's nuclear program until after the U.S. presidential election on November 6th. Now, we talked about this on yesterday's update in the context of Russia. Uh, the Russians are very, very busily working to secure positions in Syria, and they're looking forward to the fall of Bashar al-Assad, at which time they'll be able to effectively control uh, Syria. <clears throat> Stands to reason, goes this article, that Netanyahu would not fix a date with Obama to take place after an attack, or the president uh, would not receive him. Well, that being the case, there won't be much for them to talk about. In other words, uh, Deb Kefile is astutely pointing out that since this meeting is now set up uh, for the coming week, uh, in in the context of the period heading up to uh, the November 6th elections, the probability of an early war or a pre-election uh, war against Iran is looking fainter and fainter at the moment. Obama stood up to the blasts from a number of influential American editorial writers and strategic analysts who urged him to offer Israel a solemn commitment for a preemptive American offensive against Iran. Well, that has not happened. And so we have uh, an interesting situation developing. We have Mohammed Morsi 
wanting to become nuclear, uh, the Iranians wanting to become nuclear, <laughs> and we have uh, the the militant, militant groups that are in control of Lebanon uh, wanting to become nuclear. And it looks as though Mohamed Morsi is going to obtain for himself uh, medium-range nuclear-capable missiles from Beijing, of all places. You know, we have talked about the prophecies of the latter days concerning Egypt uh, for several years, and we have pointed out that there are a number of passages uh, in the Old Testament, and these are day of the Lord passages, meaning uh, they would be latter day fulfillments of prophecy. And these passages talk about the total annihilation of Egypt. And the annihilation of Egypt seems to be uh, the result of a flood. We have in Jeremiah 46, 7, Who is this that cometh up as a flood, whose waters are moved as rivers? Egypt riseth up as a flood, and his waters are moved like rivers. And he saith, I will go up, I'll cover the earth, I'll destroy the city and its inhabitants thereof. In other words, uh, the Egyptians of the latter days set their sights on uh, Israel and on Jerusalem, saying, we'll destroy that place. And then uh, we go back to Jeremiah, verse uh, 9 of chapter 46. Come up, ye horses, and rage, and ye chariots. Let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, that handle the shield, the Lydians, that handle and bend the bow. In other words, we're talking about a, uh, a Middle East war. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance. We have written uh, several times about how a flood could come crashing down across Egypt because uh, since uh, the Russians and the Egyptians built the Aswan High Dam, creating Lake Nasser, which is a 200-mile-long lake at the headwaters of the Nile River, if that high dam were ever broken, and uh, Israeli authorities have written that it can only be broken uh, by nuclear weapons, that is, it's such a big dam that ordinary explosives would not open it up, if it were opened by uh, a nuclear attack, uh, the waters of the Nile would flood the entire land of Egypt from the first cataract down to the Mediterranean Sea, wiping it out totally. And that is what uh, Jeremiah seems to be saying. In Jeremiah 46, 8, Egypt riseth up like a flood, and his waters are moved like rivers. Uh, we wonder... We are curious. We, we, we try to understand how all these things will come to pass. Uh, and we try to put various prophecies together in context. And right now we see the uh, uh, Islamic Brotherhood, the Muslim Brotherhood, arming itself to the teeth, uh, putting uh, American-bought, American-built T-60 tanks along the uh, border between Egypt and Israel, and we see war preparations being made on every front. Uh, and where preparations are made, particularly when virulent members of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood call for Isla Israel's destruction, then we know that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And so, uh, again, to, to uh, recap just a little bit, Mohammed Morsi is taking, systematically taking control of Egypt one step at a time. And he just happens to be shopping for uh, nuclear-capable missiles uh, from Beijing. And he wants to make Egypt a nuclear power. I have a suspicion that the result of that will be something that he really isn't looking forward to, something that he is really not foreseeing. But, nevertheless, we're watching all these developments with an eye toward Bible prophecy. Gary Stearman for Prophecy in the News. Keep looking up, everybody. Mm -hmm.